The three leading Republicans vying for their party's Senate nomination face off on the debate stage, leading to some heated exchanges. They have no idea how to create jobs because they've never actually done it. This is a slick sales pitch from a guy that has changed his view on this. The reality is, is I'm the only one on this stage who's enacted Trump policies. How they're trying to differentiate themselves before Ohio's primary election. The Ohio Senate paves the way for the state to curb health care and sports participation for transgender children. I hope that this is the last time this legislative session that we're working to take away the rights of people from the LGBTQ community. There are men, and there are women, there are boys, and there are girls, and they are different. When those restrictions will go into effect, the longest-running political show in Central Ohio starts now. This is NBC4's The Spectrum with Colleen Marshall. Three candidates, three stories to share, but did any one of the Republican Senate hopefuls come out of the debate on top? Welcome to The Spectrum. I'm Colleen Marshall. On some key issues, Secretary of State Frank LaRose, State Senator Matt Dolan, and Cleveland businessman Bernie Marino are lockstep. But there are also drastic divisions, as we saw this week in their first ever debate. My next our media colleague Joe Tuohy and I asked about policies, foreign and domestic, in a sometimes heated political conversation. We are broadcasting live from Cleveland to Columbus, Dayton, Youngstown, Steubenville, and the Huntington, Charleston, West Virginia market that serves the southeastern portion of the state of Ohio. Voters across Ohio heard from the three Republicans who want to be the next U.S. Senator by taking on Democrat Sherrod Brown in the fall. Because it's a top priority for the Republicans who will vote in the primary in March, we started with border security. Question one went to Marino, an immigrant from Colombia, South America. We have to have a zero tolerance for illegal immigration. That means we cannot allow any form of amnesty. So yes, like President Trump, who's endorsed me in this race, I believe that we should make certain that we deport anybody who is in this country illegally. Look, it's no wonder that Bernie wants to put a position over this corp campaign that I don't hold. But he doesn't want you to know where he stood before he was a Senate candidate. He worked with the Mike Bloomberg organization to ask President Obama for a path to citizenship. He wanted a path to diversity, or excuse me, uh, residency. He won awards in Cleveland for these positions. Now that he wants your vote in a Republican primary, he wants to militarize the federal government and deport children. Dolan wants to secure and seal the border, add technology, and work with the Mexican government to take care of cartels. LaRose is ready for something more aggressive. There's an ad supporting your campaign that says you want to, quote, kill the cartels. Do you agree with some prominent Republicans that that could mean military intervention, including drone strikes in Mexico, 30 seconds. 100 percent. The definition of a foreign terrorist organization is a group that's willing to kill our fellow Americans. These cartels are killing over 200 Americans a day with the fentanyl that they're bringing into this country. We know that this comes from China, mixed together in Mexico. We must define these cartels as foreign terrorist organizations and use the full force of the U.S. military and the U.S. federal government to kill them so that they can't kill our fellow Americans. We talked about the Trump endorsement. Dolan did not ask for it. But the reality is, is I'm the only one on this stage who's enacted Trump policies. These two have spent a great deal of time deleting all their past comments, hateful comments on Trump. LaRose told us in an interview that President Trump assured him Trump would make no endorsement in this race. One day after that interview, Trump endorsed Bernie Marino. And the reality is he did endorse me. He knows who Frank LaRose is and doesn't think that Frank will have his back and understands that dynamic. And I think it's extremely horrific that Frank would have lied and said that President Trump told him something that he obviously did not tell him. And I'm going to go back to you, Mr. LaRose, for 15 seconds. He essentially called you a liar for saying that the president promised not to endorse in this case. 
you. Settle it once and for all. Are you lying about that? Of course not. In fact, uh, my honor is something I value above almost all else. What Ohioans don't care about is a bunch of bickering from a couple of corporate elitists. What they do care about is solutions from a battle-tested conservative who's going to fight for their values and save our country. That's who I am, and that's exactly what I'll do. On abortion, all seven states that voted on abortion access voted to protect it. After the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade and returned abortion decisions to the states. Despite that, all three Republican candidates said they would support some level of a federal abortion ban. But in as so much as there is a federal role, I think we can work towards consensus around not having federal funding for abortion and getting to a point where we can have a 15 week floor where there's common sense restrictions after 15 weeks. First, we have to understand this is a difficult issue for everyone. I am pro-life. I'm proud of my pro-life record. We must treat all life equally. So when we don't do that, we're not being true to our Constitution. My pro-life record has reduced abortions in Ohio by 37 percent. Listen, the states can set their own standards, but there should be a bare minimum that we look at at the federal level. And we're not a nation that should allow late term abortion. That's the extreme position that Biden and Brown have. We're not a, a country that should allow a minor child to be hustled off to a Planned Parenthood facility without her parents knowing. On foreign policy, we asked about America's role in Israel and Ukraine. I've been very clear that not another penny will go to Ukraine until we've secured the southern border. That has to be the top priority. And once we do that, of course, the world's most exceptional nation can do things to make sure that our world is safer and more importantly, that America is more secure. I was shocked when my opponent, Mr. Moreno, said that Israel doesn't need America's help. I guess you should expect that for a guy that sat on a board of a foundation that gave money to anti-Israel groups like J Street and even a radical pro-Palestinian organization. I'm going to channel my friend J.D. Vance's words. This guy would just lie through his teeth for, to get political power. I have no idea what the heck he's talking about. The reality is this. The receipts. I've been endorsed by Norm Coleman, Senator Norm Coleman, who's the chairman of the Republican Jewish Coalition. I've been endorsed by Lee Zeldin, who's the vice chair. I've been to Israel and invested in technology companies. Frank, my granddaughter is Jewish. The fact that you would say something like that is disgusting, but it's in it's keeping with his brand. This guy will do anything to achieve political power. Israel, that situation has nothing to do with Ukraine. We have to stop Funding, funding endless wars. We have been at this for two years. We've given Ukraine almost well north of $100 billion. And what's happened? Russia's gotten stronger. I represent a large uh, Ukrainian population. Uh, and this isn't a balance sheet war for them. This is real. Their country has been invaded. And you know what else they know? They, they have affinity with our country because we've been invaded to the southern border. And the incompetence of Joe Biden is making them both worse. But we cannot take our eye off the ball. Here's what it means. If the United States does not continue to provide ammunition, weaponry, and aid to Ukraine, then Ohio boys and girls will be fighting Russia in Poland, Western Europe, or the Baltics. All three closed the debate promising they are ready for the Senate and asking for your vote. It's not exaggeration at this point to say that we have a country to save. What I'm asking you to do is consider me in this job interview because I'm the battle-tested conservative. We've got enough corporate elites in Washington. What we don't have is any Green Berets. And I would be the first Green Beret to serve in the United States Senate. Sherrod Brown has been in the U.S. Senate for 18 years. Let me ask you, do you feel more economically secure? Do you, do you feel that, that we should be relying on our enemies for our oil and gas? Do you feel that our border is open? Do you feel that our neighborhoods are safe? He has not, he has produced an agenda of vulnerability. I can take out Chair Brown. We need to get to Washington and get things done. My mom gave me the gift of bringing me to this country. Built a great life here in America. I'm running because I think career politicians are, are taking this country off a cliff. It, we only save this country when we stop sending career politicians to Washington, D.C. That's what we saw with President Trump, the most transformational, best president of our lifetime, an outsider in Washington, D.C. And the reason he's endorsed me, the reason J.D. Vance has endorsed me, the reason J Jim Jordan has endorsed me is because they know we need outsiders in Washington, D.C.
Passionate words at the State House this week, too, when senators decided whether or not to override the governor's veto of legislation targeting transgender children. An update when we come back. After several attempts and months of testimony, the Ohio Senate paved the way to restrict health care for transgender children in Ohio and bar transgender athletes from participating in women's and girls sports. The debate over House Bill 68 pitted Governor Mike DeWine against his own party, with Republicans in the General Assembly ultimately voting to override his veto. State House reporter Natalie Fahmy was in the Senate chamber when that vote happened. The bill will become law in late April, barring any legal battles. It was a long journey for this legislation to pass, with hours of testimony from both sides over the past several months. On Wednesday, the debate on the Senate floor lasted about one hour. As you can see on the screen, it started with a protester being forcibly kicked out of the chamber. You could hear more protesters outside the entire time. Again, House Bill 68 bans transgender athletes from participating on teams that align with their gender identity and banned minors from receiving gender affirming care in the state. Ultimately, nearly all Republicans in the Senate voted to override the veto, arguing that the bill protects children and that girls and boys are too biologically different to compete in the same sport. But across the aisle, Democrats say the bill is going to marginalize an already small community in Ohio, saying the government should stay out of personal health care decisions and support LGBTQ students in schools across the state. I hope that this is the last time this legislative session that we're working to take away the rights of people from the LGBTQ community because we're fatigued and we're tired. But I got to tell you, not tired enough to fight back, to push back, to demand our rights. There are men and there are women. There are boys and there are girls and they are different. While it is possible to identify as anything you want, it is not possible for a man to become a woman or a woman to become a man. I think parents should make those decisions and not the, not the government. We want to be a very welcoming state. Uh, and that's, you know, that's what I hope that I can convey as the governor of the state. This was the last step needed to override the governor's veto on House Bill 68. But the governor has also enacted his own emergency orders and is working on other rulemaking right now. Meaning, come late April, there could be several laws on the books in this area. On Wednesday, the Senate also took a vote to override the veto on a bill that would prohibit local governments from banning the sale of flavored tobacco and e-cigarettes. At the State House, I'm Natalie Fahmy, reporting for The Spectrum. Reality or rhetoric? Our experts weigh in on the claims the GOP Senate candidates made on the debate stage when we come back. Welcome back. We have with us on our roundtable today Bob Clegg, a Republican strategist, and Brian Rothenberg from the Democratic side of the aisle. And this week we had a debate with the three men who want to be the Republican nominee for Senate to go against Sherrod Brown in November. You both watched the debate. I'll yep. ask you first. It's your party, Bob. Yeah. Did, did anybody, do you think, rise to the top? Um, I think they all, I mean, number one, I believe, and you're, you're going to be shocked, that any of those three would be better than Sherrod Brown, so I'm okay with all three of them. Um, no, I think they all did a good job trying to defend their position. I, you know, I don't like the constant, you know, hitting at each other, but, you know, it's politics. It's not softball here, you know, so I, you got to you gotta expect that. At least that. it's politics today. Yeah. So, Brian, what did you think? I know you watched well, as well. I thought you did an excellent job, <laughs> I will tell you that. But I will tell you, it seemed more less of a debate and more like a, a dating show where one guy had the rose of Donald Trump and and then LaRose kept saying I want that rose I want that rose and then He's the other get the and the rose. other guy kept saying I've been consistent I've been consistent I should have that rose it wasn't really substantive and then there were a couple of key things that I thought were really disturbing one is there two of them were willing to shut down the government which would yeah really d devastate the economy. I think Dolan was the only one that, that didn't say would do that. And all three of them are like, well, on, on, on choice, they want to have the federal government take it over to override yeah. what we did in our Constitution. So at one point, the Supreme Court allows it, then states are saying no, and now we want the federal government because they want to control it back right. in. Yeah. Uh, 
At what point do we listen to voters? And that could hurt them in November, do you think? Because clearly here in Ohio, even though this yeah. is a Trump state, yeah. by a pretty wide margin, people approved ab ab access to abortion. And so that has fallen in their their listing of, yeah. of you know, what's important to them. Um, the economy is always going to be important. The one thing that's that they talked a lot about, which has now become number two in issues to all voters around the country, is immigration and what's yeah. going on in our southern border. And and you asked, you know, quite a, pretty detailed questions about that, and they all had very detailed answers. So I think those two things are going to be a lot more of the deciding factor in that Senate race. Uh, but a you, lot of people were shocked that LaRose said he would be willing to send in drones with missile strikes. I, I mean, I think that, that the rhetoric right now, especially because they're leaning to the right, is a little ridiculous. And and frankly, they can't elect a speaker, Bob. How are they going to get to some kind of agreement? Well, well, they well, got a speaker. Yeah, twice. Well, yeah. They, they but, can't elect a speaker with the help of the Democrats in Congress, yeah, but that's but, okay. You know, we won't, we but, won't mention you know, that. I mean, this is an issue that affects farmers in Ohio more than anything. They need they need the help. They need the migrant workers. But they we need, this need certainty. a flood of people. That's correct. But nobody can pass anything because you have folks with this yeah. inflamed rhetoric. We have laws already on the book that can be enforced to stop them. You know what? The Biden administration, instead of fighting Governor Abbott down in Texas about the razor wire, they should have said, okay, fine, do that. If you think that's going to work. You know what? No, there was more of it under Donald out, Trump than I under Biden. I do want to point out to both of you late in the week they were talking about a compromise on a border agreement and Mitch McConnell came out and said President Trump doesn't want it so now he doesn't think it can go through that is correct so they don't want to resolve toward it. some kind of an agreement is political again well it's they, always, like all these issues are political and you know whether it's abortion I mean the, the the president and Kamala Harris were in Virginia and all they talked about was abortion right well to them it's that an looks issue good for the now it looks good for the Democrats yeah well you know it's just whatever issue you think is gonna help your candidate you then lead with that but but I really do think that the big or bigger issue here is getting this resolved because it's gonna help create jobs help create better farming if we can resolve we got to stop but, the flow for First, stop the flow. Well, even into Donald the Trump couldn't do that. He, well, I mean, but they were coming excessive. over. Come on, six million came over when he was president. No way. Yeah, but they got to work for compromise first, and neither side seems optimistic you that can't that's resolve going it to unless there's compromise. Yeah. Well, yeah. we're going to go to break right now, and when we come back, we're going to take a look at what's happening with Nikki Haley and Donald Trump. We'll be right back. Nikki Haley says she is not going anywhere. Donald Trump said it's already <laughs> over. So, Bob, is it over? Um, yes. Uh, I don't know why the president wants it to be over. I think it helps him, actually, to have a campaign, a primary campaign. It keeps him out there, keeps interest in him and in the whole race. So I don't quite understand why he wants it to be over. But, um, yeah, it's over. I mean, her... Big Democrat donor, hedge fund guy, has backed off on funding her now. So, um, yeah, I mean, in the next real primary that's going to happen is South Carolina, her home state, and she's going to lose it. Yeah, it's bad and, to lose your home yeah. state, Brian. I mean, you've got to admit that she doesn't seem to have a path forward if she loses but South Carolina. I think Carolina. for the good of the nation, it's good to have this debate, especially on that side, because, you know, he is so controversial. I mean, and, you know, who's he going to insult if there's no one else in the race? I mean, that's half of his game. Well, But, you know, other than that, he can spend more time in courtrooms insulting judges. It, but the it, reality it, is she's now challenging Donald Trump. Shouldn't yeah. she have done that eight months yeah, ago? Except Shouldn't it wouldn't she have, have said the same thing? things eight months ago to give people a choice? Yeah, except if she would have done that eight months ago, she probably wouldn't still be in the race because she would have become like Chris Christie, the anti-Trump candidate. Yeah, that's and, true. And they get rid of those right away. So, no, I don't think it would have. As far as a debate, I think you're right. This is a good debate. I wish the Democrats would have done that because what we're seeing is at least a quarter to a third of Democrats don't want Joe Biden to run again, but the Democrat Party's decided, well, he's going to be our nominee. I think, so we don't I care think what in you a Biden-Trump race, I think the problem is you've got a lot of independents and they're scared of Trump. Yeah. And I know where the polls are right And they now, don't like Biden. They're going to move. and it's. But this election is going to be about Donald Trump, his bombastic behavior. You want it on that. Case. You don't want it on the <laughs> economy <laughs> it or it the border. It. Well, Trump, or, Donald Trump made it about But you that. know what? The it first makes time. It about okay. him when he gets it, it, The up. first time in 2016 that worked because he hadn't been president. But he served four years at president. And guess what? 
there wasn't things weren't all that bad. Really, the economy was better. The, we shut down the economy. Uh, no, we COVID. didn't. Oh, COVID. Well, yeah. But all before right. then, Let's come on. Term. Oh, you no. guys can continue arguing, but we have to go away because it's time <laughs> to end this program. <laughs> but we will see you next week on the Spectrum.